We're good? I believe we are live. Okay. All right. Well, welcome back to another edition of Virtual Vines. We want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Um, we are going to be featuring our What Exit wines in this broadcast. So we have a red, a what, a, a red, a white, and a blush that we're going to be tasting. Um, just a little bit about What Exit. If you're not familiar with it, it's a secondary wine label that we do here at Old York Cellars. And this is a really um, fun wine for us because not only is the are the labels fully customizable, um, and this is an example of the new wines that we just or the new label that we just currently released, um, but it also is a charity label for us here. So we do donate a portion of the proceeds to the wines to various New Jersey charities. This started around the time of Hurricane Sandy. We joke that the first vintage of this wine was actually our Sandy wine because our winemaker Scott here was trying to make it in the midst of everything that was going on. No power, yeah. generators. Eight, eight days to the minute. See? Not that you're counting. No. There's no sand <laughs> in the wine, though. There's no sand in the okay, wine. Good. Um, so we decided at that time that we wanted to do something to give back. And so it just seemed uh, like a perfect fit that this wine, these wines in particular, would give back to various New Jersey charities, starting with the. And now we, it's been so popular that we have been supporting various charities throughout New Jersey. Yeah, and we're going to continue the tradition of it. It's just, it's a great cause. Yep. So that being said, I'd like to take a, a moment to introduce the special guest with us here today. This is Mike Schwartz. Mike is with, is the founder. Um, of a really awesome organization, Hometown Heroes. They were actually the focus of our event here in, at, during the summer in July. I guess it's still July, officially today. Um, our July 12th Summer Fest. Um, we donated the, all the admissions from that event to your organization. And we're really proud to be teaming up with another amazing New Jersey charity. Mike, we're going to do like a little... Uh, break in between some of the wines to give you guys a chance to catch up and during that time Mike is going to talk a little bit more about Hometown Heroes, what they do. Um, it's a really exciting organization for us but we wanted to share it with everybody out there um, and if you have not, remember tonight every um, we're donating a dollar for every tweet so please tweet your questions, pictures, let us know how you like the wines, what you're doing, hashtag virtual vines and we will try to get as many tweets going tonight for Hometown Heroes. So it's really exciting, a new sort of addition to our virtual vines, the tweeting for charity aspect, but we love it, we think it's fun. Yeah, we want everybody to join in on what we're doing and everybody enjoy and enjoy the wines and thank you for Hometown Heroes. Thank you guys for having us, we appreciate it. Absolutely, so if you have questions about the wines or about Hometown Heroes, please send any of your questions, like I said, pictures, you can send them to at Old York Cellars, at what exit wines and use the hashtag virtual vine so that we can get all those questions answered for you and to thank you to all the bloggers that are joining us tonight we hope you enjoy the wines please let us know what you think we love to hear what you guys think about the wines i'm going to take a real quick second to just talk about some of the upcoming events here at the winery um i can't believe i'm actually saying this but mark your calendars our harvest festival is coming at the end of september um, that's September 27th and 28th. It's always a really good time here at the winery. It's not only amazingly beautiful here, um, but it's just fun. We're really getting into the harvest and what's going on here at the winery. So there's going to be hay rides, vineyard tours, music, food, all that fun stuff. Yeah, there'll be great bands here on that time. There'll be winery tours. We'll be talking about harvest. Um, depends on how harvest is going at the end of September. We may be processing grapes or doing something else at the time. It all depends on how the weather holds out and what's looking for harvest right now. Everything is looking great in the vineyard. So that's, be that's great news. That's beautiful news. Maybe you can talk a little bit more about what's going on out there. Um, right now, we're uh, the Marshall Foch, which is the one of the ones that we use for the red port and some of the, our other reds is uh, starting to go through verasion. So it's Which actually is? starting, well, verasion is starting to get the sugars into the grapes and it's starting to actually get a little bit of pink color to it before it, you know, turns over to a real dark red. Am I going to have a test on this? Because I didn't Yes, are you taking notes? <laughs> yes. Verasion. Yes, okay. verasion. So it's a big, it's a big point in the, yeah, in the grape it's growing just, process. It's when the sugars are just finally starting to come in and everything's starting to take effect. So ripeness is right around the corner. Okay. And that, so Scott's getting ready. They're going to be putting up the bird netting soon because 
in addition to them being really tasty to us, they're also really tasty to all the little critters around here. Yeah, the, the birds usually come in around 17 bricks, and I'll get into bricks and measurement of sugar in a little bit, but we like them for winemaking around 21, but birds like them around 17, so okay. they come in before we do, so we, in about another week and a half, we'll be putting up the netting. By the end of the day, I'm going to start making my own wine. Out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take all the notes. All right. Um, <laughs> Also, too, we're really excited. We have um, this weekend, we're going to be releasing some new wines. Very exciting. 2013 Vidal Blanc will be out. That's, You're very excited. That's, that's my favorite You're white. Very, very proud of that wine, how it came out this year. Yes, so, very good. We're excited. Um, the 2012 White Port. Which I've been in a while trying to get going, and it's finally in the bottle, and it's all labeled and ready to go, and that's going to be really nice. Yep. Nice hints of honey. And that one's made with uh, the Riesling. Yes. And then, on the heels of that, we're going to be releasing the 2013 Dry Riesling. That's not this weekend, but within the next couple weeks. Mm -hmm. The uh, 2013 Dry Riesling and the 2013 Chardonnay. Yes, the non-oaked Chardonnay. Yep, so that is going to be an unoaked uh, vintage, very similar to the 2010. Mm -hmm. um, so we're really excited about that. So, it, you know, for all those out there that have been wanting our dry whites, we're going to have a lot of dry whites available very, very soon, starting this weekend. Um, the next Virtual Vines, mark a calendar, September 25th, right before the festival. So um, we're going to, we haven't exactly decided what wines we're going to be doing for that one, but we will, I'm trying to sort of see if I can get my winemaker to let me do the new Malbec. We shall see. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll pick one of the whites, but we will let you know as soon as the winemaker over here tells me what I can and can't put in the Virtual Vines. We don't want to rush anything. So I'd like to take this opportunity again to thank all the bloggers, and I will say open your wines. So um, we're going to start with the white. So Scott, if you want to talk a little bit about the What Exit White. The What Exit White is a, uh, a new blend that I've sort of put together. It's a, a combination of a Chenin Blanc and a Cayuga White. I put the Cayuga White into there just to give it a little bit more of the apple characteristic to it, just to give it a little bit more acidity because the Chenin Blanc is sort of more of a, a bolder white wine that doesn't have quite the fruit characteristics to it. And the Cayuga is a lot lighter style wine um, with a lot more acidity, so mm -hmm. it feels a little bit more crisp onto it. So with the blend between the two of them, you get a little bit more of that complete characteristic to it. You pull up the Cayuga in the beginning, and then at the end, you sort of more pull up a little bit of the Shannon Blanc on the finish. And why don't you talk a little bit about, because we've talked about the Shannon Blanc. The Shannon Blanc is a white variety. You'll typically see it in the Loire Valley of France. I find that it has a little bit of um, softness to the wine, and I think the, the Cayuga, which um, is a French-American hybrid, mm -hmm. um, like you said, I think it balances it out a little bit. Sometimes the Shannon can get a little flat, yeah, it's sort of like the like a Sauvignon Blanc has that little bit of a flatness to it, and it has a little bit more of the notes on the on the on the back of your palate. And like I said, the Cayuga is going to be a little bit more fruit forward, mm -hmm. so that's why I try and put the two of them together. I did both still a cool fermentation. I've talked about fermentations in the past, um, keeping them cool, keeping a good cool fermentation around 55 degrees. That way, then you keep a lot of the 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 character, the aroma notes and stuff in, in the wine because the fermentation can just blow off a lot of heat and all that heat, it's all your characteristics that blow out of the top of the tank. So you want to try and keep a cool, nice fermentation, prolong it, keep it going. That way then you keep all the nice notes in there. And that's what I try and do with a lot of these. Yeah, and it's got a great color. It's very, very light. I mean, it almost just looks like sort of a, a barely tinted water. I mean, it's very, very light in color. Um, well, the nice thing about it, um, it finishes very clean on your palate. Yes, it does. So if you wanted to do, you know, seafood, if you wanted to pair it with any type of seafood, you had a lot of butter characteristics or in that area there, it's got enough acidity where it's going to be able to cut the characters of the butter. But it definitely does have some body to it. Mm -hmm. So what's really nice about a white that has a little bit more body is that you are able to pair it with more foods. It will stand up to some of your poultry dishes, some of your pork dishes. It'll, you know... It's got legs, too. I can see it. Now, yep. I mean, you have to explain to me. See, I'm a non-wine guy. So. But you noticed that they had well, legs I, I in see it. That all I know. So, so you're, you're ahead of the game okay. now. <laughs> what, is, what does that mean? It's going to more uh, con 
more of the body going into it and also the amount of alcohol that's into it. Okay. So this is going to be a little bit more than 12%. This is close to 13 so it's going to have a little bit more um, body to it, a little bit more characteristics. But that's that that that's what he was sort of talking about too. How it has a little it has a little bit higher in alcohol. It has a little bit more body, a little bit more weight to it, which makes it more versatile. Okay. It still is very fruity. It ha I definitely get like that the acid on the the finish. It fi finishes completely clean, which is great. And sort of when you get the the sugar. When the grapes, when they come in, you're looking at 21 bricks. And short of the rule is 21 bricks will ferment down to about 11 and a half, 12 percent alcohol. So the sweeter the grapes, the more alcohol that you're going to get out mm -hmm. of it. So you, you know these here are the bricks. It's we use like a hydrometer or a refractometer to measure that. So that's going to determine how much sugar that's in the grapes. Okay. So these come in. These were up around about 23, 23 and a half. Hmm. Yeah, this is like a perfect like lobster with it's some very butter. Clean, yeah. Because it'll stand up a little bit to the the butteriness from, you know, dipping it in the lobster. This would be great with something that had a little bit more spice to it. I mean, I wouldn't go heavily spiced on this one, but it could definitely mm -hmm. stand up to something that had like a little bit of a kick. Halibuts. Oh, we have a question here from Wine Compass. Thanks for joining us again, by the way. Thank you. Happy to have you. How long have you been working with Shannon Blanc? Uh, two so, years now. Yeah. Yeah, this is our second year working with this. Um, been playing around with it. It seems to be a nice grape to work with. Um, it stands up to anything. Yeah. It's a hearty grape. And plus, when we were trying to decide what we wanted to put in our what exit, we wanted to do something that was different than the wines that we have on our Old York Cellars label. So we, and not a lot of people use Chenin Blanc, so we thought it might mm -hmm. be kind of fun, something, something different. different. Yeah. And it turns out to be very popular. People love it. I think it's a nice sort of alternative to your Sauvignon Blanc, to a Chardonnay. It's it's not a very popular name, it, you know, as far as this side where everybody knows what a Chardonnay is, everybody knows what a, Chardonnay, what a Sauvignon Blanc is. Why did I finish mine before you guys? That's okay. That's all right. You enjoyed it. There's more. There, yeah, there's more. We got a whole bottle here. You're good. No worries. I need that. Somebody's going to have to drive me. <laughs> So, and the nice thing is, too, we're going to get into the blush at the, or the rosé style blush, I guess I should say, at the very end, but that one uses the Chenin Blanc also yes. in the Cayuga. So, um, a little bit more, I guess we can move on to the red. Sure. We can try the red. Um, so, if you haven't opened up the red bottle yet, open up the red. And this wine is a blend. It, we're going to use the Hometown Heroes label. Yeah. There you nice. Go. Uh, should I pour? In your honor. Sure. Absolutely. Any glass here? This is mine. Whichever ones are it's empty. Um, and I always talk about one of these. Um, it's called a, uh, an aroma wheel. You can pick them up in bookstores. Amazon has them. Any type of those type of books, wine books that carry them. Hey, look at you. Um, sometimes you can get them off the internet and you can sort of um, download them. They might be a little shrunk down because you're trying to, you know, photocopy something off of the internet, but you'll get the gist. Um, it's called the, you know, the aroma wheel. Depends on what you're looking at. It'll have all the characteristics of every type of wine that you're looking at, whether it's got some, you know, fruity characteristics. It's got some blackberry notes into it. Whether it's got a little bit nutty characteristics, maybe it's got a little bit of a hazelnut character to it. Any type of characteristics that you're looking at, this will narrow it down. You wonder how you know they have on the back of the bottle the tasting notes of wines, and they'll go through this way, and they'll just narrow it all down, and it'll give you a pinpoint whatever characteristics you're looking for. Whether it's you know a little bit of a like a dry red, you're looking for that mushroom characteristic to it, so or you know however whatever flavors that you're looking for. So it kind of starts the way it sort of starts is. So if you're finding sort of fruity notes, then it kind of guides you in the direction you want to go. So then if you're, if you're you know, tasting berry, then it takes you into blackberry, raspberry, strawberry, or blackcurrant. It mm -hmm. sort of guides you. So I think it's really helpful, too, because a lot of times you, you smell or taste and you're like, I don't, I'm getting something in that, but I don't know exactly what it is. So I think that mm -hmm. this does a really nice job of, ha of actually sort of guiding you into figuring out what that'll, it is. That'll make me sound smarter as a non person. Yeah, sort of so going you just, back, you're looking at that, sort of going back pocket. towards the Shannon Blanc, mm -hmm. you sort of can pull up a little bit of like an apricot right. characteristic on the finish, and that'll have that on there, the apricot finish, 
onto it and you'll be really pinpoint it. Yeah, you could take you could just have like a little small version of this in your mm -hmm. pocket in your that, next wine yeah, event. I'll be an expert. Yeah, you could just whip it out and say, hmm, I'm getting hints of uh, tobacco, oak, cedar, and vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> People look at you and go, who's this guy? Mm -hmm. Cheat sheet. Yep. Yep. So we had another question. Do we have a question? More of the soil and characteristics of the, the vineyard and stuff. Um, the vineyard comes in, it's a little bit more on the hillsides. It's got a little bit more of a lip shale, sort of a blend uh, characteristics to it. The climates, it's, you know, an 80, 90 degree sort of summer. It's dry climate into the vineyard. Works out pretty good as far as growing season. You get good ripeness to it. We definitely, we have a lot, and on our property, we have a lot of hybrids, French American hybrids, mm -hmm. which grow really well in this climate, so. Yeah, the Cayuga is, does very well here on the East Coast. The Cayuga, the Foch. Yeah, very um, vigorous. Things like that, yeah. But we do have a variety of, you know, of varieties here that we grow, so. And then and one of the interesting things, too, because we're getting, you know, as we're getting into the harvest season, one question that people ask me all the time is, oh, well, when do you harvest? What date do you harvest? And I think it's really interesting for people to know that literally as they start to get closer to harvest, Scott and Gary, our vineyard manager, will literally go through and on a daily basis and check the different types because they all ripen at different times. Yeah. They're all affected differently by the weather. The, so it can, This summer here so far might be one of our earliest harvests yet. The Marshall Foch, the Gewurz demeanor, we may be looking in the end of August. Um, for that and it's usually the first or second week in September is usually where we are but we haven't had any su significant rain here in the last two weeks so we might be might be pretty early on harvest. And it, and it will vary too depending on where on the property it is and I think that's something that people are pretty uh, amazed by too that you know up, yeah. up at the top will actually ripen faster than down at the bottom of the vineyards and you're like well it's on the same piece of property how's that even possible but yeah. sort of if you can see behind us that's the nice thing about doing the virtual vines out here today this in front view. of the tasting room instead of where we've done it in the past in the tank room you know you can actually see the vineyard behind us and it does slope down and that that way there is um sort of a southeast look that we're at now sort of right towards princeton um, view on us yeah, we thought we, we had to take advantage of the amazing night tonight and do our yeah. virtual vines outside so that you get to see this lovely view. I'm in the tank room seven days a week yeah. anyway. It's we nice only let him here. out on various <laughs> occasions, and tonight is one of them, and we'll lock him back up tomorrow. He's not in the tank tonight. So no, he's not in the tank tonight. No, I get to go home. <laughs> so, <laughs> if, so I guess we'll move on to the next one. We'll move on to the what exit? Red. Tonight we actually have, um, in honor of Hometown Heroes, we did do a Hometown Heroes label, just to sort of show that not only can you customize on the label with, with text, um, but that you can, we can also do fully customizable labels. So it's a lot of fun. We do them for different business organizations, charities, sh different events here at the winery, showers, birthday parties, anniversaries. Anniversaries, 50ths, 80ths. We've become like the engagement capital of Hunterdon County, I do believe. Yes. And so we do a lot of, you know, people, a lot of engagement uh, labels and various things. It's very cool. That's me on the label, by the way. Yes. <laughs> I, I can see the resemblance. See the resemblance? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. The dark suit. I left my cape at home. That's, <laughs> that's very cool. I like that. And thank you guys for doing that. Oh, absolutely. Really so you want to talk a little bit about your What Exit Red? Uh, the What Exit Red, this is going to be the Merlot Barbera blend. Um, it's a uh, sort of a little bit more on the Barbera side than Merlot. It's going to have a little bit more Barbera in it than Merlot. It's about a, close to a 60-40 blend. You're going to pull up a little bit more of the Barbera. It gives it a little bit more of the backbone um, yep. that I always talk about, you know, how it's got two different flavors to it. It's got, a, you know, the hardiness to it, but yet it also has the soft mm -hmm. characteristics to it on the finish. Mm -hmm. And the soft characteristics that you get on the finish, that's going to be the Merlot. Merlot. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, the bold character up front, the oak um, that you're tasting, which is American oak as well, um, that I use here, is going to be a little bit more of the bold characteristics up front is going to be the Barbera. And it's, I pull up a little bit more of a, a mushroom characteristic to it as well. Yep, and you definitely, it, I think it has a 
one of the things I think is so great about this wine is it does have a really nice balance between sort of the acid, the fruit, and the tannin. Because all of you need all three in balance to have really great great wine. And I think, mm -hmm. like you said, you get a lot of the softness at the end, but I love that little bit of little dryness, the little bit of tannin, but it's not overly powerful. Mm -hmm. This is only about 13.5% in alcohol, mm -hmm. so it actually is perfect. It doesn't have the heat to it, yeah. you know, where some reds will have a lot of alcohol to them and they have a lot of heat to them that we talk about. This is not going to have no. that. It's going to be nicely balanced. It's going to be very nice and smooth. And the lower, the bit, being a lower, little bit lower in alcohol, having the nice acid component and the tannin component, I mean, I could, I have a list of things that you could pair this with, but I mean, it could go on and on. I mean, it, it could go from more of your traditional Italian meals, burgers, pizza. I mean, it would just run sort of the gamut of food just because yeah. it sort of rides right there in the middle. Well, this is sort of like the one where, like I do that Shiraz, where I do the, the London broil with, mm -hmm. with some seasonings. This would go right in there as well. I'm okay. tasting a, a berry. What am I tasting? What, where's the wine wheel? I don't want to use the cheat sheet. I'm asking the winemakers right here. <laughs> Blackberry, raspberry. Mm -hmm. I pull up a little bit more of a, a cherry, an actual red yeah, cherry. Okay. You do get a lot of red fruit on this mm -hmm. one. So instead of it being more of a fruit berry, it's more of a, like a, a red cherry. But it's not sweet. It's very, mm -hmm. it's very balanced. It's nice. And Barbera is a very is is one of the big grapes out of Italy. You'll see it a lot in the Piedmont region. Um, made into various different wines within Italy, but it is, like you said, it is does have a lot of structure, and it, they will blend it with other things, but they use it a lot. It's sort of the, when I always use like sort of a chair analogy, it's like the structure of the chair, and then you blend it with something else to give you yeah. the nice soft cushion. Yeah, to, get, to sort of round the flavors mm -hmm. to it, and that's why we talk about blends. Blends a lot of times will give you the, you know, sort of the style of, you know, it's bold up front, and then you start pairing it with different things, whether you pair it with a Petit Shiraz or a Pinot Noir, or I did this one with a Merlot, just to round off the flavors. Somebody asked the question, why do we use Barbera? Not many, oh, uh, PA Vine Company asked, why do we use Barbera? Because not many people grow it. It's another one of those grapes that I'm trying to be a little bit different mm -hmm. here at Old York. Um, trying to make things a little bit different, things that you're not really going to see on a on Yeah, a wine we thought shelf. it would be fun to try to work with some varietals. I mean, we make a Malbec, and not a lot of people, you know, make a Malbec. Um, yeah. We do Vidal Blanc. I mean, this area, there is a lot of Vidal Blanc, but, I mean, I would say there's not but a whole lot of my, wineries in New Jersey that are doing a straight Vidal. Yeah. But our Vidal is, yeah, it's 100% Vidal, mm -hmm. and it's a dry Vidal, yep. I mean, where you're, other you're places just, will do, you know, something, you know, sweet or whatever. You're just but. getting hammered in the wine room, just coming up with weird concoctions. He is. He's like a mad scientist. Out. Sometimes. <laughs> That's how it works. It works. It comes out good, yeah. Yeah, as long as it comes out right. But we, yeah, we thought when we were sort of selecting what wines we wanted to do, we wanted to try to find something that isn't being done everywhere. We wanted to give people some variety. And what's really nice about the What Exit is it does give us a little opportunity to be kind of creative yeah. with and you have talked about the blackberry before, yeah. and that's another reason why I do blackberry is nobody else has it. Right now, I've had that at uh, some of the Jersey Wine Grower Association functions where I've seen you guys, and, and it's very good. So yep. I, I came here last time, it was sold out because it's so good. Yes, um, double so gold in the Finger Lakes competition. Gonna, yeah. Very good. Yep. Thank you. We're going to try and uh, find some. We're going to walk the grounds until I find a bottle. Later. Yeah, there might be a bottle or two laying around. If you, if you talk really nicely with okay. Scott, he might. He might give you some. But yeah, and Scott does his fruit wines in, in a much different style than a lot of the other New Jersey wineries. His are done, you, he actually makes them very much like a wine. They have, they have acid and they have, they don't finish too sticky sweet. I mean, they finish yeah. nice and clean. I mean, they're really, in terms of residual sugar, they're really on the low end. It's a, only considered a semi-sweet actually. Okay. Yeah. So, so I think that dessert. that's what makes yeah, them so even, popular. It doesn't even go into a classification as dessert wine. <laughs> yep. Now, do you, I'm sorry, do you, you mind if I ask a question? Do you no. infuse those with, uh, I know a lot of wineries do, with uh, brandies or different things? No, that's 100% that's blackberry. Okay. Is that That's not the only dessert wine that you guys... I do a peach as well. Okay. Which and I also think was sold out the last time. I yes. Did. Peach will be out. That'll be out hopefully in another month and a half. There you go. Maybe we should do that one for the next virtual vines. We'll have to get approval from the winemaker. <laughs> So we had two questions. One was asking what foods pair well with 
the what exit red. Um, I had gone through a few. I was saying, you know, burgers, spicy rice dishes, jambalaya. That was one that had jumped out at me a while ago. I just thought that that would be really great with this. Um, seared, even blackened tuna, salmon, things like that. A lot of like sort of um, things you would put on the grill, mm -hmm. um, steaks, things like that. Some of your heavier stuff. This would be great with because I think the nice thing is neither one would over sort of overpower each other. Um, cheeses, hard to medium cheeses, camembert, gouda, gruyere, asiago, parmesan, pecorino, that barbera in it. So if you kind of look at it from a regional standpoint, and it's an Ita the barbera, it's really heavy in barbera, which is a traditionally Italian varietal, you're going to want to pair it with foods of that region. So it's, it's really kind of a no-brainer if you look at sort of what wines, you know, what foods are popular in Italy, that region of Italy, that's a natural pairing for the wine. Another one was, when was the Barbera planted? We were on our fourth year with the Barbera. Um, it's doing decent, it's not doing the greatest. Our residual sugar in the Barbera is uh, zero. It's totally dry. It's just nicely balanced, so it feels like there is a little residual in there. It, it is, and I think um, that's the fruitiness of the Merlot. I think it really does sort of give the perception of sweetness, but it is. It's completely dry, but because there is a nice fruit characteristic and the red fruits like you guys were talking about, the cherries, mm -hmm. it, it, it gives that appearance. We, have, we had another wine um, a couple vintages ago that was kind of like that, too, where people swore it had residual sugar and it didn't. It was just so fruity. Todd G said, surprise the harvest is early. It's been a cold summer. It's dry. It's been a, you know, the sun has been out. We haven't had a lot of cloud cover here. So we we're actually doing very well today. It was another, you know, 85, 90 degree day. No cloud cover. We've been doing pretty good and we have not had a lot of rain. The only rain that we've had gotten in the past has been just, you know, one inch downpours, which only lasted the night and it's do winemakers irrigate? Is that a stupid question? Uh, they do down in South Jersey, they do, okay. um, because it's a sandier soil, so it doesn't hold the moisture. We have a lot of clay and, and shale in our soil here, so it holds a lot of the moisture. So I don't really have to worry about irrigation here. Um, the only thing I have to worry about irrigation is my one- and two-year-old plants um, until they get a root established. Because so they'll go down 30 yeah. feet, the roots. Yeah. So contrary to what a lot of people think, they're like, oh, you know, You've had a really dry, hot summer. Uh, you guys got, you got to be, you know, that's got to be terrible for you. Mm -hmm. It's like the complete opposite. And to get back to what the question was about it being a cold summer, actually, if it's a rainy summer, that actually pushes harvest back yeah. much more than it being a little cool. Yeah. We, we, you know, you have the, the sun has been out. We did a lot of leaf pulling. We just finished leaf pulling uh, a week and a half ago. We finished all the leaf pulling. So you'll see all the grapes are now all visible to the sun. So there's nothing hidden from that everything is open to the wind so the canopy can dry out and it'll you know boost harvest and the difference between a, a, a you know a rainy summer and a dry summer could could change the harvest time by a month weeks what it'll, we it'll, about a week and a half two weeks it'll it could change it okay. but also with a rainy season you're going to get more quantity where in a dry season you get more quality um, so the vines you know, get harvest, much more vigorous yeah Harvest will be down a little bit. We won't yield as much because the grapes will be tinier and tighter, but they'll have more sugar in them. Okay. Where in wet seasons, they'll grow a lot of vigor and they'll be almost touching each other in the rows. Well, I'm learning here. Yeah, see? You had no idea you were going to get such an education. No, no, okay, we have another question. New Jersey Wine with me. Thank you for joining us again. The question is what year has been our best vintage? Best vintage? I think that depends on the wine, really. I mean, we've had, I mean, our 2000, 2011 was very good. 2011, we had our 2011 Cabernet, which was won awards off the charts. Yeah. Um, but yet our 2012 Merlot won a gold medal out in San Francisco. I remember one of the wines that I've loved the most was our 2009 Syrah. That was, yeah, that so was, depends I, it, it, on the vintage. It really depends on the, but yet our 2013 Vidal Blanc, the one that's coming out now, we're super excited by because it's awesome. So I think it kind of depends on the wine itself. Yeah, and they, they always talk about when, when it's in the tank, you're always going to have a problem child. And 
and you're gonna have one every he year. He has one every year. I have one every year. Did Sandy, uh, New Jersey Wine With Me is asking, did Sandy affect the grapes? Um, when Sandy came through, we had most <coughs> of harvest off. Yeah. Um, we only had a couple things out there and we had a lot of wind. We lost you know, some grapes to the wind and stuff. We had the rain, but it was mostly the issue where I had all the harvest in the tanks and I was without power. Because that first, that first little bit after he brings the grapes in, and for the whites, he, he um, presses them, you know, de-stems them and presses them, or the reds where they're sitting on the skins, controlling the temperatures, because as, it, as the fermentation stops, it gives off a lot of heat. And so Scott has to sort of struggle consistently to keep mm -hmm. the temperatures controlled. And then also doing pump overs and things like that. There's a lot that goes on in like the first two months. So to not have power during those times, you were he lost a lot of control of a lot of the wine. Yeah, I was using a generator to run the pump because during the fermentation with the reds, you're fermenting the reds on the skins because the juice in red grape is clear. So you get all your co color, all your characteristics from the skins. So some fermentations will go on the skins for maybe 15 days. Mm -hmm. Some will be 10 days. My 2012 Cabernet was 29 days. Wow on the skins during fermentation. The Merlot in this was 18 days. So it all depends on what you're looking at for characteristics. My last year's Malbec was when Sandy hit on that Monday was the day I was looking to press it. I couldn't run the press because I need three phase electricity to run the press. So it got an extra eight days on the skins, on the skins that I wasn't planning on. So it come out really dark and a lot of you know herbaceous characteristics to it which is nice for the mall back but if I would have had something else in there it, it could have been devastating but right. luckily it was what was in the tanks at the time so I was using a generator to do a pump over and I do it three two times a day where I take the juice from the bottom I pump it back over the skins on top and get them back saturated oh, wow. with yeah. the juice because the juice is clear so you get all the color from the skins so you gotta keep on pushing that all those during fermentation the skins will float and rise out of the juice so you got to punch all those back down and get all the coloristics. The color, color, the tannin, the yeah, a lot of different flavor yeah. profiles are found in the skin. Okay. You know, that and the, the ripe seeds and stuff, you'll get extracts from, from that. Right. Um, so during that whole time, I was using generators he to was, try and yeah. move pumps around to do these pump overs and punch downs. Live and drone and don't audience audience oh no. oh yeah our live so audience uh, somebody needs to work on their handwriting that's terrible <laughs> um have you thought about doing a sweet vidal um no i haven't um a lot of places will use their vidal to do like up in canada ohio state um those places there will do an ice wine with their vidal mm -hmm. um, our problem here in october is when we get hit with frost we lose all the leaves off the vines and it, it doesn't stay cold. It warms back up again and then you get botrytis in the vines and it becomes a real headache. So I haven't done anything with the, with the ice wines to do it properly and stuff as far as like doing a dessert a style harvest. that way or a late harvest Vidal. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't have that much of the Vidal to sacrifice to making a dry and a sweet. So that's why I just I stay with the dry so that I have a, a continuing label all year, you know, all season I have at least the Vito on the shelves. But the, never say never. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, so why don't we, we'll, we're going to move on to the blush, so everybody open up your blush wine. But in the meantime, I'd like to talk with Mike again. Give Mike an opportunity to talk a little bit about this wonderful organization, Hometown Heroes. Um, talk to the audience a little bit about what it is you do, how you started. Just sure. give them a little insight. We're, we're so happy to be here, and thank you guys for having us this Absolutely. past month. We had a lot of fun, and uh, you know, any any anytime anybody wants to, to raise money, it's 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 sorely needed. We've we've been around Hometown Heroes, been around for just about six years now, and we were formed to help people in a crisis. Uh, lo and behold, Hurricane Sandy hit four years into. Um, you know the formation of, of, of hometown heroes and unfortunately we had thousands of people in a crisis yeah. so uh, just to give you an idea we had 10,000 people come through our doors in the last year and a half due to Sandy which is about 2,500 families um, it's humbling to say the least to see you know the, the people that were affected by the storm but that's what we do we just help people in need 
Um, so we do a lot you don't hear about. The last few years, uh, you know, homeless families, sick kids, there's a lot of need out there. But it's neighbors helping neighbors. It's people in your communities that need help. And uh, the real, we like to honor the true heroes in the community, people like yourself, who step up and say, what can I do to help? Uh, I think that's the biggest accomplishment that we've had in six years. And one of my favorite nights of the year is our gala, where we get to honor heroes that do this and step up in the community and say, what can I do to help? So we're humbled to be here. We're happy to be here. We could use all the help we can get. It's always tough in any time raising money for a charity. So uh, we can't thank old, old York, uh, you know, uh, anymore. It's it's great that you guys have, have, have teamed up with us and we're just happy to be here. Yep, we love it. Well, yeah, like and, I said, it's yeah, great. Yeah, it's, and it's great that it's just individual people that are helping out. It's not, you know, your big, you know, politicians or anything that's involved with it. It's just normal, your, uh, your they're neighbor. Not, they're not heroes. They get paid to yeah. do their job, right? Yeah. But you know it's, it's your neighbors that's helping you guys exactly. out. Exactly, exactly. It, it's, you know, we had, we had a homeless couple we took off the street a few years ago that I always tell the story, but... Uh, you know, it took a while. It's an elderly couple, uh, too, that was living on the boardwalk in, in Seaside Heights, and uh, there were some medical issues. We had an audiologist step up and, and say, what can I do to help? Got some hearing aids donated, thousands of dollars worth of hearing wow. aids. Um, but, you know, Mike Salzer, Dr. Mike Salzer, I'll mention him here. Uh, he's one of the heroes that we honored a few years ago. But there's people like that who step up to say, what can I do to help? I want to help my neighbors out. And, you know, it, it's, it's tough to raise money in a situation like that because you're not doing one particular thing. Yeah. But uh, we do it all. So, you know, you could have a, an issue here in town and call us up and say, hey, what can we do to help? And we can facilitate th that through our 501c3. Um, if we have money, we'll sometimes throw it at it. Sometimes it's hooking up those professionals with the help that right. those people need. Um, but uh, it is humbling to see, you know, people in, in need. And, and uh, it's been a, an interesting experience for the last six years, to say the least. I was going to say, I, 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 I asked Mike sort of before we started, I was like, do, what what do you do? You know, do you have another job? Because I know you're so heavily involved yeah. and I hear about Hometown Heroes and you're doing this and doing that and going here and going that. I know it's been taking a lot of time and you're opening up offices, I guess, in other states now too. Yeah, we're growing nationally, which is, uh, you know, it's pretty cool. Um, you know, people around the country see what we're doing and they want to get involved, which is neat. Uh, so if anybody out there wants to be, you know, involved, get on the board, participate, we're happy to have you. Uh, we had people, we were doing a, an event with Three Doors Down last November and, and we had some people down from Louisiana who wanted to get involved and lo and behold, we set up a chapter and now they just, I think they just got done with their sixth event, awesome. um, which is great. So they're growing that chapter. We have a chapter in New York. We're growing Pennsylvania and Florida as well. And uh, it, that's challenging as well. But mm -hmm. it's nice to see kind of the message grow. And you know, our, our tagline is, you can be a hero too. And we really do. We just provide the platform for people to step up and, and be heroes. That's great. That's nice. That's awesome. I think, and I think Jen, your executive director, she was here for the July Festival. And she was talking to you know some of our guests. And she said it great. It's, it's a, you're paying it forward. So right. whatever sort of things you've been given in life, it's an opportunity for you to pass it on to somebody that's maybe less fortunate that needs some help. Absolutely. And I, I think that's... It's, it's great because it allows everybody to step right. up and do something. So I think that's, that's really awesome. Thank you. So we appreciate you being here. We will continue to support Hometown Heroes through What Exit and various other charity events that we do here at the winery. Um, and we're, we were talking with Mike. Hopefully we're going to have maybe put together a really cool Hometown Heroes label that you can pick up online and continue to donate to Hometown Heroes. So the cool thing is you can be a hero and drink wine too. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So if you haven't already opened your blush, why don't you get that one out? And we're going to be tasting the last wine of the night. This is really exciting because, again. Is that all I get? Yep. Uh, with the What Exit line, we get to be sort of really creative with the different types of wines we do. And for this one, we decided to do a dry style rosé. Yep, this is on the drier side compared to our old York Cellars blush that we have. This one here is going to have 1% residual to it. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be real sweet on the palate, but you're able to you know, pair it with a lot of different foods because it makes it a little bit more versatile if it's only a little residual to it. So again, it's about 1% residual. This is a Shannon Blanc, mm -hmm. Cayuga, and a Cabernet. So I use the Cab for the color. And it is a beautiful color. I yeah, mean, that's like the perfect sort of salmon-y pink that you sort of expect with. I and, and if you hear me just sort of going on and on and on, I'm like a huge dry rosé fan. I think it's 
totally underrated as far as a wine wines are concerned. It's they're super versatile. They go with a large variety of foods due to the fact that you do have that bit of the red wine in there that gives it some structure and some complexity. Um, dry rosés happen to be one wine that can literally go from like the beginning to the end of a meal. You can start with an appetizer. They can go right in to the entree, salads, and and finish out a meal. Just start to finish. The uh, I use the 2012 Cab in this. If you know mm -hmm. the 2012 Cab, it's got a lot of fruit forward characteristics to it. So it's uh, got a lot of fruit to it. So that's why I used it in this. How much Cab is in here? The percent? It's about eight to ten percent. Okay. So just enough for the color, and it gives it a little bit more of the, the nose onto it as well. Okay. You definitely get the tannin from that cab. You get um, some of the red fruit characteristics because the 2012 mm -hmm. cab was very fruity. That was one of the ones that it gave like a, a perception of almost being like a sweeter style cab because it was just so fruity. And, then, and again, you pull up those acids in the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's that Cayuga that you're pulling up. We'll give it those acids right in the beginning of the palate. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, as far as Asian foods, uh, Indian curries, Mexican, Tex-Mex, Middle Eastern foods, Spanish paella, tapas, things like that, beautiful. In fact, you'll see a lot of really great values um, in dry rosés from Spain. You'll see a lot of dry rosé. Um, pastas, risottos, Thai, because it does have like that 1% of residual sugar, mm -hmm. it will, can handle some foods that have a little bit of heat to them. S sushi, this would be great. Believe it or not, barbecued pork, this wine would be great with it. Grilled fish, um, bully base, which is like sort of the traditional fish stew from southern France, Provence area, which is very well known for um, their dry rosés. Again, sort of yeah. pulling from a regional perspective, pairing the wines with because it is Chenin. Yep. And so. Just like the, the Chenin Blanc, the the what exit white that we had before, it's gonna finish nice and clean just like mm -hmm. that as well. Yep. But yeah, I think and this is a new wine for us. We haven't done a dry rose, so mm -hmm. we're really excited at how this came out and it's got great reception in the tasting room. Mm -hmm. People love it. It's a nice alternative. So it, it works well too if you're not a red wine drinker but you wanna have something to pair with mm -hmm those types of foods, this dry rosé is, is a great sort of alternative. So I would like to make a couple announcements here at the end. Oh, we do have another question. Todd G says, have you ever considered screw caps for what exit? Um, when we first started uh, the vineyard actually back in, in 2008, mm -hmm. we actually thought about that. Um, but when we got the equipment, the, the equipment that we have has the corker already on it. Yeah, you have to have special So now to switch over to a screw top would be a lot of adjusting and a lot of, you know, secondary equipment. So we have already have the corker now, so that's what we've stuck with. But at the beginning, in 2008, we, we had thought about it, and it was sort of the aspect. It was on the fence, and we could have went either way with it. And, um, but if we would have went with the, with the screw tops, our entire line would have been screw tops. Hmm. You know, I went to Australia a few years ago and did a vineyard tour, and all the good wines out there are screw tops. Mm -hmm. yeah. and it it's a perfect of, seal. Yeah, one of the questions we had, you know, because people, I guess people tend to think that, you know, screw top wines are, are less, like, cheaper, I guess, yes. in, in a sense. But I uh, know they explained down there that, you know, the cork sometimes will ruin the wine. Um, you get this, tainted, this tainted a, cork. That's a synthetic. This is a synthetic yeah. cork, so it won't. So unlike the screw tops, you know, the screw top is a perfect seal as well, and so is this. Okay. So when you do buy a bottle of wine, you take it home and you leave it sitting upright for a week or two before mm -hmm. you finally put it in the wine rack, I'm not worried. If it was a natural cork and you did that, I'd be terrified because what happens with the natural cork is when it dries out, it shrinks. Right. And then it passes air and then it oxidizes and goes bad drives me nuts when I go into a liquor store and 90% of the bottles are all standing upright. 90% of your like $75 bottles are standing upright. <laughs> yeah, and it drives me nuts. I just shake my head and go, these are the people who should know better. Right. Um, so I put synthetics into them and that way then I don't have to worry about it nearly as well. It's a perfect seal and the same thing with screw tops. Okay. But I already have the equipment to put these in. So. so you see where I went with this. I went full circle to get them to tell you that they use good corks, good yes. synthetic corks. Yes. So. 
A couple things I'd like to just sort of finish up our virtual vines. Um, just so you know, we're going to be uh, running a special. So if you love these wines as much as we do, we're going to be offering 20% off now through August 8th. And you can use uh, with a coupon code HEROES um, in honor of Mike here from Hometown Heroes. So basically, it's all caps HEROES. You can use that online or in our tasting room. I guess if they come into our tasting room, Chris, they will just write on a piece of paper HEROES in all caps and hand it to you <laughs> to use their coupon code. So, and that will give you 20% off of the What Exit Wines tonight through August 8th. Um, and we would like to announce we had a sangria contest this past weekend. We did three different sangrias, one made with the red, the white, and the blush. And we invited all of our guests here this weekend to vote. It appears that the What Exit White Sangria, which was the peach, we made a peach sangria. Mm. It's really it was all good. stone fruit. Yep. Um, that was the winner. Um, and so we drew one name from the winning sangria. And the winner is Sam Miono. So, Sam, if you're watching, you are the winner of the sangria contest. And what do they, what do, what is, what is Sam getting? Oh, a sangria package. That's what they're getting. So basically you'll get the recipe and the fixins to make your sangria. Um, so we will be contacting you. We appreciate you coming out this past weekend and voting on your fav favorite sangria. Um, like I said, the next virtual vines is going to be September 25th wines to be announced within the next few days. I just have to have a conversation with this guy over here to find out what he is going to let us um, release yes. for the virtual vines. So I want to thank Mike again for joining us. Thank you. Um, we appreciate it. We'll look forward to future things we're going to be doing with you guys. Support Hometown Heroes. Support what they're doing. Grab a bottle of What Exit. Tweet. We'll let you keep tweeting through the rest of the night so we can get as much money donated to Hometown Heroes as possible. Oh, we're up to 90 tweets. I want more than that. Yeah, hurry up, guys. So keep tweeting. Um, if you want to say hi to Mike, whatever you want to tweet, just tweet away so we can get some money donated like tonight. Just one more question. Is Mike single? Yes, yes, Mike is single. <laughs> there you go. Does somebody tweet that? Yes. Maybe that's your next charity event. Yes. <laughs> um, but thank you again for joining us. Thank you for coming thank out. You. We appreciate having you here. Um, like I said, we look forward. We're all excited about what's going on here. Yes, and thank you to our live audience. Yes, we had there. a live audience tonight. Very exciting. Thank you. thank you for coming out. We appreciate it. And join us for the next Virtual Wines on September 25th. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. You wine? Yeah, you do. You can't <laughs> cheers on an empty glass. That's terrible. Yeah. It's bad luck. Oh, poor. Yeah, there you go. Pour some more in there.